So I came across a kind of common interview question slash brain teaser that kind of helps you understand closures. If you don't already understand closures, I can kind of explain it to you in a second. But if you do already have a basic understanding of closures, but you can't seem to like think of a good example to wrap your head around it, this is a really good one. So let's go ahead and talk about what closures are. So if you don't already know, a closure is basically a function that has access to its outer function state. And the closure itself is the function, but basically you have a snapshot of the state surrounding that function as the function is created. And that is not going to make much sense to you um, unless you see it in action. So let's just let's just go ahead and um, go over the interview question slash brain teaser that I came across and we can kind of uh, go from there. So I'm gonna make this small. Cool. All right, so let's let's do this. So here is I'm going to type out the question. And I want you guys to actually try to think about the answer before I move forward. So I want I'll have a spot where you can pause. So let's let's talk about the question. So you have a for loop. And it's just a normal for loop. Uh, we'll say var i equals, whoa, <laughs> var i equals zero. i is less than, let's say, three. And then let's say i plus plus. And inside of this for loop, we have a set timeout, which runs a function. And it waits we'll say three seconds to run that function. Now, the function that will get run in this timeout is just console.log i. So, let me read this one more time. We have a for loop. It's gonna iterate three times, zero, one, two. And it's going to call set timeout, which is gonna wait three seconds and then it's gonna log i. So I want you to pause and I want you to think, what is this going to output? Go ahead and pause now. All right, I'll assume that you've paused. Hopefully you did. Hopefully you put some thought into this. Um, but let's go ahead and just show you what it's going to log. Let me navigate to my area. So I'm gonna say node closure.js. and it logs three, three times. Now, why would it log three, three times? Well, if you know the answer to this question, then you at least have a basic understanding of closures. If you don't, that's fine. That's what we're here for today. I'm gonna to explain this. So, what's happening here is we start off at zero. The loop starts off where i equals zero, and then each time it iterates, the value of i increases by one. Now, at no point should the code inside of here in a typical for loop ever, uh, never should i equal three because you put i is less than three. And also, wouldn't, wouldn't you expect this to log zero, one, two? Wouldn't you expect it to at least have zero and one in there? So the reason why this is happening the way it is is because we do the for loop, we do a timeout, it waits three seconds, and then by the time those three seconds are over, the for loop has completely finished. The for loop completes like almost instantly. So three seconds later, i is equal to three. It's equal to three because even though we're not supposed to run the code inside of here after i is no longer less than three, it still gets set to three. So the way that it works is it says, it, it checks the code in here and it sets it equal to zero and we start the loop, it runs the code and then i is now equal to one it runs the code again. I is now equal to two, checks it again. It's fine, it can do it. I is now equal to three. Now it checks the code and says, all right, we're not gonna run this again. So it does go to three. It just doesn't run the code inside of here again. So why is this three? Well, here's why. By the time this finishes, by the time this code runs, I is equal to three because the for loop executes instantly. We're waiting three seconds to run the function inside of the set timeout. So when it goes to run this code, I is now equal to three and that's why it runs it and logs it three times. So how can we get this to do what we wanted it to do, which is to log zero, one, two. How can we get it to run the way that we want it to? Well, we can take advantage advantage of closures. Now, remember that I said closures are functions. So the closure is gonna be a function and it's gonna take advantage of its snapshot environment. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. 
So at the time that this inner function is ran, i is equal to three. So can we create a function where i is not equal to three when the function is created, if that makes sense? And the answer is yes. We can utilize the idea of closures. So let's go ahead and do that. So what if this function inside of set timeout returns another function? Let's say it returns a function that does this. Let's say it returns this. Let's say it returns a function that calls console.log with i. Well, what is i now? Well, the, the nearest, in terms of scope, the nearest value that i could possibly be is this. So it's still going to be um, three. So we need to give it a version of i that is equal to what we would want it to be at the time that this function is created. And in order to do that, we can use immediately invoked function expressions. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this function like this, and then we're gonna immediately invoke it like that. And then we can now pass in i to here. So now that we're passing in i, this has to accept an i as well. So let's save that and make sure that this does what we expect it to. Now it logs 0, 1, 2. So why is that? Well, the inside of here, the nearest version of i is this version of i. So it's gonna use this version of i, or I'm sorry, actually this version of i. This is the argument being passed to this function. So since this is the function, the closest version of i in terms of scope is this one now. It used to be this one, but now it's actually this one. This is the closest version of i to this function. So since that's the case, as we're in the, when we're looping through, when we're on zero, we actually are passing in the value of i at the time of iteration. So it's zero, we pass in zero, it creates this function, it doesn't execute it yet because 3,000 3, milliseconds have not gone by, but it creates this function and it has access to that snapshot, it has access to i at that exact moment in time. So it's creating a closure during each iteration and thus now we have the behavior that we would expect. So I do not expect you to understand this if you're kind of new to JavaScript or if you're just brand new to the idea of closures. This isn't exactly a beginner level concept. So this is considered by Mozilla uh, a intermediate level concept. So if you're a beginner, don't worry, that's fine. You're not gonna understand closures, that's, that's totally cool. I just wanted to introduce it to you and if you are in that intermediate level, understanding closures will definitely help you level up as a developer in JavaScript. So I'm actually working on a course right now that's actually geared towards those people who are at the higher end of beginner or intermediate and are trying to move into intermediate or advanced level JavaScript. I'm working on a course right now. It should be ready in the next few weeks and it's going to be free for all of you. So I will be sure to let you know when that is available. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great day. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a like and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.